Right, today I want to show you how to do the quad aperture card. I've made quite a few over the last few weeks. This is one of the ones I've made. And I kept this quite simple. And so that's what it looks like when you spread it out. And so this card was a green check and it had a darker side on one side and slightly lighter green check on the other. So it worked quite well with the different layers. So that's that one. This was my original one. The seaside one. Maybe I'll to get it close up. You can see yeah, lots of little creatures in there. And then I also did this one as well. Just... Now this one was a plain green card. And I just did some heat embossing on the bottom there. Just to give it a bit of interest on the front. So I'm going to show you how to make these. Now the best way of doing it is to use a 12 by 12 sheet of card. And what you want to do is, because if you use a 12 by 12 you're going to have the least amount of waste. If you use an A4, you're going to need two sheets of A4 and you'll have quite a bit of waste. Now I've chosen this from the first edition Wildflowers pack, because I really like the fact that it's got the flowers on one side and then it's got this kind of watercolour on the other side. So what you want to do is you want to cut this in half so you end up with two that are 6 by 12. There we go. Two pieces that are 6 by 12. Next what you want to do is take a scoreboard. I'm going to be using the We Are Memory Keepers scoreboard. And one of the one of the, the six by twelves you want to cut down so it's ten and a half inch long. The other one needs to stay as it is. I'm just going to cut that down. So there we have one that's ten and a half inches and one that's twelve inches. Okay, so what you want to do is on the longest piece, so the piece that's 12 inches, you're going to score it. Let me turn this over. I can see better on this side. You're going to score it at 5 inches, at 5.5 inches, at 10.5 inches, so you can see over here, and at 11 inches. I'm hoping you can see that on the camera. Now this piece here is your tab, so you're going to need that to stick the two pieces together. On your shorter piece, you're going to score at 5 inches and at 5.5 inches. There we go. Let's get this out of the way. Right, so, next what you want to do, the, the longest piece is going to be your front piece. I'm going to start with the flowers, I think. And then, so what you want to do is just, um, if you score your lines, not score your lines, fold on your lines. Let's just fold down all of your lines. So the first two lines, the five inch line and the five and a half inch line, both need to be mountain folds that. Then the next line, next score line, needs to be a mountain the other way. So yeah, effectively a valley, isn't it? So if you're doing a mountain, a mountain, that would be effectively be a valley. And that's the same with that one, a valley. Like that. So you end up with that. Then this one is just going to be uh, like a little book cover. So you're going to fold that there and then fold this one in as well.
you end up with that. Now, you're not going to attach them together yet because you need to put your apertures in. Now, with the cards that I did to start with, I've always used the circle apertures, but I just thought for this one we'd give it a go with a different shape. So, as you can see, I've used a large circle, then a slightly smaller circle, then a slightly smaller circle again. So, you've got three different sizes nesting circles. So, for this one, I'm going to have a go and try out using some nesting square dies. Now there's not as much gap with this as there is with the circles, but I think there's probably still enough gap that we can, you know, succeed with it. So you want to take your largest, your largest square and your largest piece of card, and on the front, and I tend to do it so that the first piece opens up like a book or a card would. I don't do it this way round. You can do it that way round if you want to, but I personally prefer it if it opens up like a normal card would. So what you want to do is take your your square die, nesting die, and position it so that it's central left and right, but I usually have a bit more at the bottom than I do at the top. So let's just stick that down and we're going to die cut that. I don't know how much you're going to be able to see of this. Got my grand calibre out. Let's just put this on. Sandwich it between the two plates and run it through. And run it back again. tape off. Now you obviously you can keep that square because that's a very nice square. So use that one. So that's your front piece done. Now you want to take your middle piece and what I tend to do is I, I'll, I'll just lay this down so it's pretty much square. Get that and just kind of approximately put it in the right place. Because your card is not fixed, it's a bit of a movable feast anyway to be honest with you. So I'm going to put it roughly where I think it needs to be. Take it into position. Put the plates on top. And then run it through. Another square that you can use. In fact, you start stacking these up. That's really nice. I could use that on another card. So that's number one, number two. So you can see it's starting to come together. Now what you want to do is take number three, which is your shorter card. And at this point, you can actually stick it together. The reason why I don't stick it together to start with is just because I find that it's quite a lot of bulk to try and stick it all through. But um, at this point, you can you can do it. So what we're going to do is, this tab here, you need to put tape on this bit, not on this bit, on this bit here. The reason why is because that's going to go around the back of the second, the shorter piece. And then you won't be able to see it from the front. Now, I mean, luckily this is quite a, a busy piece of, busy pattern paper. So it will hide quite a lot of things, but even so, I'd rather it being out of sight. So there's our tape. And then what you want to do is take your, your uh, other piece. Now this piece is going um, to open up. So if you imagine you've got this piece here, which is that way. Then that's that way. And then this one is going to open up the right way. Like that. 
I don't know if you can see that. It goes in and this front piece goes in front of that tab there. So if you open it up and where your score line is, which is here, that's your score line there, this is your second score line, but your first score line is there. So you're going to take your tape off. And I actually find that it's a little bit better to kind of fold it over. So I'm going to turn this, so I know that needs to stick on like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it and line this edge up with this score line here. Because what it does, if I do it this way around, it enables me to line up the whole sheet. Which then means I know that's definitely going to be definitely going to be straight. And so, just there we go. So now we need to cut the smaller piece, the smaller square. So we're going to lay that on with it shut. We're going to lay that on. We're going to have a look through from the top to make sure it's on properly. Get our piece of Washi tape, oops, moved it, and stick it down, I reckon it's about there, like that, so we're going to cut through that, and with this what I would do is only lay on, only lay on the, um, the back piece, don't worry about the front piece, and let's stick this over the top. So let's peel off the washi tape. So there we have another square, which again we can use. And if I bring my other two pieces in, look how good that would look on a card. Well, you'd need a greeting corset. In fact, I think I might do that later on. But anyway, so there we go. So that's your three apertures. So when you fold your card back up again, there are your three apertures. Now because this paper is very busy, I don't want to go too mad with the, with the decorations to go on it with the die cuts and whatever. So what I'm going to do, I just need to re-crease these a little bit, because they're fighting a little bit. And the thing as well with this one is, as opposed to some of the other aperture cards I've done before, this will obviously fold flat into an envelope, because you can just kind of... Yeah, you can just kind of you can fold it like that. Um, right, let me just re squeeze it back into shape again. There we go. Now I have on a previous video I showed you how to use the Isink um, glitter paints, um, Aladine, and this was one of the pieces that I used um, to just get rid of my leftover on. And I mentioned in the video that you can use it to die cut shapes out of. So that's what I've done. So I've die cut. Some little butterflies. Die cut four little butterflies. And I think they go quite well because they're kind of they stand out but they've got all the colours that are in the papers. So I'm just going to dot these through the apertures. I might have one there, one there, one at the back there, and then maybe one at the top here. Like that. And then I'm going to have a get well soon greeting at the back. I'm just going to stick these on. And I'm just going to put, actually bend the wings up and just stick a little bit of glue or tape or something on the back there. I mean, you can do whatever you want really for this. It's so versatile. But I think the butterflies just, they have, they just add a little bit of something, but not so much that you're then sort of whomping the, the card. Because you don't want, if you've got a busy paper like I have, you really don't want too much in the way of embellishments. 
but I think just that little bit of glitter just pops out. So I'm just going to put a bit of, I've chosen to use double sided tape, which is a bit of a faff, but I'm going to put that there. And then this one I'm going to stick by probably the bottom wing, I think. Where do you want to go? Let's do it, go about there. So I'm going to stick the bottom of that wing there. You could use wet glue if you wanted to, or you could use one of the glue pens. Any of those would be fine. I'm going to stick that in here. Let's take a look a bit further up right there. Yeah, that looks good. And then, can't pick it up. Come here, Mr. Butterfly. I think he's going to go. So he's going to go on the third aperture, and I think he's going to go there. him on there. Obviously double sided tape isn't the easiest thing to peel off but I thought it would be preferable to glue just for this. So let's stick that on there like that. And then this one's going to go, so it could go at the back there or it could go, I'm going to put it on the top I think. I think it needs to go on the top. Like have a bit of a gap. Right, so that can go on here. Like that. There we go. So that's I quite like that. Just a little bit of something. Then the get well soon. I'm going to put in the middle there. And I'm going to go and cut that now and come back to you. Right, I've decided to go for this pinky colour because it really does tone in well. You can't really see it on the video but it does, you have to trust me on this one. It really does tone in with the flowers on the card. Now what I've done is I've just put three layers of um, double sided tape on the back because then when I die cut it, it means I can just stick it straight down. So let's die cut it. As you can see, it's actually cut through. Oh, it's cut through everything. Wonderful. The end isn't coming out as clean as the others, but it's fine because it's still quite easy to come out. So there we go. Get well soon. So we're going to stick that on there. Now I'm going to stick it on with it closed, I think. We'll have a go anyway, so I can get it as sort of central as I want it to be. Because when we're doing this, tech, this way of doing it, you just kind of you literally oops, have a sticky die cut without having to faff around with loads of glue. If you have a really intricate die cut, it can be a little bit more faffy to do it this way, just because sometimes the tape doesn't want to cut. But anyway, get well soon. And then we're going to stick it in here, winding the butterfly. Which way does that one go? The last one goes that way, okay. I think it's going to be about there. And get it straight. I think it's going to be about there. There we go. And that's basically your card done. 
So, you know, it looks like a complicated card, but it actually isn't that difficult. And you saw how quickly that was put together. Um, and I really like the look of it. You know, it's really quite sweet if you wanted to, you could have something on the front here as well. But yeah, hopefully you'll have a go, give it a try, um, and have fun with it. There'll be pictures of it on my blog, www.iced-images at, no, dot blogspot .com. I don't even know my own blog address, that's terrible, isn't it? There you go. Hope you have a go.